uh, I'd like to call to order this um, meeting of the City Council Land Use Committee for um, Wednesday, January 13th, 2021. And my apologies for the late start time. Uh, we have one item to discuss tonight, Ordinance 2101, uh, which is a rezone petition for seven acres at 1600 West Fountain Drive to be rezoned from R2 residential medium lot to employment, which is code EM. And who do we have from the Planning and Transportation Department to present this evening? Uh, thank you. Uh, I am here from, this is Eric Grulick and I'm here from the Planning and Transportation. Thank you. Please go ahead. Thank you. Um, so this petition uh, is a request uh, from Comcast uh, for a property that they own at 1600 West Fountain Drive. The property is zoned single family residential, or I'm sorry, residential medium lot uh, R2 um, and is currently uh, zoned residential medium lot. The petitioners would like to rezone this to the employment district, uh, the EM, in order to allow for uh, an expansion on the property for a new building. Um, so the property has been developed uh, completely with a uh, office uh, kind of storage building trade shop. Uh, Comcast has offices here as well as storage equipment, uh, vehicles, mechanicals. Uh, they've operated on the site for 20 some odd years, uh, perhaps even longer. Um, the property has a lot of uh, surrounding land uses that vary. Uh, along Fountain Drive, you've got a lot of industrial uses. Across the street, you have Westside Auto Parts, uh, JB Salvage. Uh, to the north of this, you have an industrial workshop and a church. Uh, to the east, you have a couple single family residences. Uh, and then south of the railroad tracks on Fountain, you have single family residences. Um, as I mentioned, Comcast has operated on this site for a long time. They've done several expansions to the property over those years. Uh, at each of those points, they have requested a use variance um, since it is a non-conforming use in the residential district. Um, those use variances were approved to allow for various new buildings and expansions to occur. Uh, however, the use variance process is no longer in the Unified Development Ordinance. Um, so the petitioner's only recourse at this period is to request a rezone uh, to allow for uh, a new building to be constructed. Um, so this is a, a rough uh, kind of site plan of the property. As you saw in the previous aerial, the site is surrounded by trees along the perimeter. Um, there is a sinkhole over on the northwest side of the site. Um, so the blue arrow is pointing to an existing building um, that the petitioners are requesting to remove and then replace with a new building. Um, so this necessitates uh, the, the rezoning allow in order to allow for this non-conforming use to expand uh, or, or to construct a new building per se. Um, so the petitioners would be constructing the new building in the location of an existing building. So the overall footprint on the site would not be expanding. Um, you know, as I mentioned, the site is surrounded by various uh, mature canopy trees and the sinkhole. Um, so these would be set aside uh, in the required easements. Um, there is right away that would need to be dedicated along Fountain Drive that would be required to be dedicated with this petition as well. Um, but overall, the, the site plan itself is not really expanding in terms of its footprint. Um, so the comprehensive plan has the, uh, the site kind of split uh, in terms of its designation. Uh, the western two-thirds is designated as employment, uh, and the eastern one-third is designated as mixed urban residential. Uh, the majority of the site that is within the mixed urban residential is the area that has the existing tree canopy coverage on it. Um, so by setting aside all of the trees, this would set aside all of uh, that area as kind of a buffer uh, between the single family residences to the east. Um, so as I mentioned, um, Fountain Drive has a majority of those uses along there as industrial uses. Um, while you do have residential uses along Adams Street, Fountain Drive for the most part has been in, uh, developed with various industrial uses. So the rezoning of this particular property to employment um, would match uh, both the adjacent zoning to the north as well as adjacent zoning to the west uh, that all have industrial uh, kind of uses on it. Um, so this was heard at the plan commission 
the planning commission found uh, that the rezoning the site would match the goals of the comprehensive plan. Uh, the preservation of the environmental features um, would preserve the buffer, uh, would not infringe upon the adjacent single family residences. Um, and they did vote nine to zero to forward this to the council with a favorable recommendation uh, and the two conditions that are listed in staff's report. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Gerlich. Are there any questions from committee members? Yes, Council Member Flaherty. Sure, uh, thank you. Thank you for the presentation, Mr. Gerlich. Um, I was taking a look at the um, current proposed uh, UDO map update um, because it struck me as odd that two thirds of the site, you know, is considered employment and one third mixed urban residential. And I think it has to do with the granularity of the um, future land use map uh, in the comprehensive plan, perhaps that it happened to slice this property in half or, or in thirds rather. And it looked to me like in the proposed, um, currently proposed UDO uh, map update that whole, the entire seven acre parcel would be zoned, is proposed to be zoned. Um, mixed use um, employment, is that, is that right? Um, that is a, I, I certainly trust your, your analysis if that is, if that is the case. Um, you know, the comprehensive plan, when we did that, it was not a property by property uh, kind of analysis where we looked at property lines. It was a lot more kind of fuzzy uh, in terms of just kind of matching uses and what's on the ground. Um, okay. Um, so yeah, so you know, while while we may we may have proposed to rezone this to mix, uh, mixed use employment, uh, the employment certainly uh, is is appropriate here as well, um, and and we may have you know done that before this petition came forward, uh, and and it very well could have just been kind of a coin flip, of you know which way do we go, um, and of course that's just in its proposed stage and not adopted or anything, but I, I thought it had some bearing on. Um, what city staff has been thinking about this. Um, and, and that does help to clarify uh, the, the two thirds, one thirds issue and why that, why that occurred. Uh, Cause that initially struck me as odd, but uh, thank you. Any other questions from committee members? Yes, council member Rosenbarger. Hi, thank you. Uh, sidewalk question, I'm sorry, um, but is there, oh. <laughs> I didn't even mean that as a joke. Is there a sidewalk along the street at this property? And if not, would they need to put one in for the rezone or like, am I just off the way off on that right now? Uh, no, so so in this case, there actually, there was a sidewalk that was installed and that was required with the previous use variances. Um, so we are at this time, uh, the city is actually proposing uh, to come through the entire corridor uh, and install a multi-use path along the north side. This would be an extension of the B-line uh, kind of spur. So we are proposing to do a multi-use path along the entire Fountain Drive frontage. Um, so with this, we've already discussed it with, with the petitioner. Um, they would be required to uh, remove the sidewalk and install a multi-use path. However, in situations here where we already have a city project that is proposed along this corridor, what we will do is work with the petitioner in, in some kind of a situation where they make a contribution uh, to this project and the side path gets installed by the city so that it is all one seamless uh, design and construction and installation along this corridor. Um, but to answer your question, the sidewalk that is there would be removed uh, and replaced with the multi-use path along uh, the entire north side of Fountain Drive. Thank you. Um, any other questions from committee members? Um, I have a question. Not... Um, then I'll get back to the others. Uh, um, my question is about the, uh, uh, the, the built area. So do I understand correctly that they're going to tear down a building and put up a new building in the same footprint? Correct. Um, so, so here on the, the site plan, uh, well, here, the, this is this this particular slide uh, is the one that was uh, is the site plan that was approved with the 2010 use variance. So you can see the existing building 
um, and then there's a kind of a little gravel pad just to the west of that. So they would be removing that existing building and constructing a new proposed building that would expand further to the west. So that would allow them to take down one of the existing communication towers that's on the property. Um, so they're, they're basically working within an existing disturbed area, but because they are completely taking down a building and building a new building, um, you know, that is what necessitates uh, the rezoning in order to legitimize the use to allow for the new construction. But um, I thought you had said that the footprint of the, the built area is not increasing. But yeah, you said I'm the sorry, new building I, is I larger. Meant, what I meant was, you know, the general, uh, the general, and I'm going to just use the word campus, uh, but the, the area that's already kind of been improved. So, you know, you can see on this area where you've got buildings and parking area. Um, so the existing building that I'm referring to is the one where the cursor is kind of uh, floating over. So they're just moving that to the west over the existing asphalt area. Okay, so the additional area, square footage of the new building is uh, going where there's already asphalt. Yes. Okay, I see. Yeah, sorry, and, if, I, sorry if I wasn't clear on that. And so they are not um, disturbing any of the trees on the property? Correct, they are not disturbing any more trees on the site or, or expanding you know, the overall developed area. Great, thank you. Other committee member questions? Yes, Council Member Flaherty. Uh, thank you, and I, I don't think I missed this. I was looking at my notes, so I'm, I'm very sorry if you did say it. <laughs> um, but there was reference to a um, uh, tower that's 240 feet tall that will be going away and put inside a building. Is I assume there's some, been some sort of technology change that no longer necessitates a tall structure for whatever is going in uh, the building. Uh, I just wanted to confirm that's not. Uh, um, yeah, that, that would or... probably be a, a better question for the petitioner to kind of address. And sure, that thanks. reminds me that I should have gone to the petitioner before we started questions. So I apologize for that. Um, is there somebody from the petitioner who would like to, uh, to speak and give us an overview? And then maybe also answer Council Member Flaherty's question about the tall tower. Uh, yes, yeah, so Andrew, uh, I believe, is the petitioner representative. Okay. Let's unmute. Oh. Um, well, can he unmute himself, Mr. Lucas? I muted myself. I'm sorry. Could you state one more time who needs to be? Andrew. Andrew. There we go. Can you guys hear me all right? Yes. OK, great. So my name is Andrew Brinks. I actually work for Frederick's Contractors. I've been working with Comcast to design the project that we are now working through permitting and therefore rezoning. So I can answer uh, some of your questions for sure. I think uh, two Comcast representatives should also be uh, on the Zoom call at the moment. So uh, they can fill out a little bit more uh, in relation to uh, anything that's Comcast specific and less construction specific. But uh, in, in general, Eric's uh, got the, the basics of what we're doing correctly. The, the, the one kind of minor difference is that the, what we're doing is we are, we are building, the, the, the purpose of the, the project is to uh, create a building that is um, more, uh, Sturdy is not exactly the right word, but more uh, fire resistant and uh, environmentally sound. Uh, the, the current building is old. I believe it predated Comcast owning the property, if I, if I remember conversations correctly, and it's, it's a wood structure. So it's just sub, subject to uh, more um, liability uh, to them if something goes wrong. What, what they house inside there is their, their head end equipment. So it's kind of what keeps the, the, their networking going. And so uh, the, the purpose of the project is to kind of build a new building that is sturdier around this equipment while keeping it um, operational. And so in, rather than tearing the building down and putting a new one in its place, we're actually going to build a new building around it and then remove the old one from the inside out. Uh, re related to the tower, I would probably defer that to uh, Mr. Copley if he's on the line. Dennis can probably speak to that a little bit better than me. 
Thank you. Uh, Mr. Lucas, can you please unmute? Is it D Copal 200? I believe he should be able to unmute himself. Okay. Mr. Copley? Okay, can you hear me? Yes. All right. Well, first of all, I wanna thank you all for um, going through all this and, and still continuing to wanna to, want to get this resolved. So I'm, I'm thankful for that. Um, and just, I'm sorry, just to clarify, you're Dennis Copley from Comcast, is that right? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Please so, continue. So to answer the question on the tower, what, what we've done with the towers is um, we've actually moved, there was some antennas on that, on that tower that were bringing in channels, uh, what, we, what we call off-air channels from Terre Haute. And we were having a lot of problems and a lot of complaints from citizens of, of I'm assuming they were from Bloomington because the signal uh, doesn't travel too far out. Um, so what we've done is we've actually moved those channels to another tower in Greencastle. And actually we've just turned them up just before the holidays and we're not getting any more complaints. So the actual channels we took off there, people should be much happier. Um, the tower remains right now. Um, and, and that's I, at, what, we, what we wanted to do is move it at one point to see if we could get it a little larger or maybe even taller. but. Um, that wasn't an option. So we just basically moved for sake of argument, we just moved the antennas to a different tower. And that tower is actually in Greencastle. So it's, uh, it's closer to where the channels, we bring the channels in. So it's really not necessarily a technology upgrade. It was more of a, a distance. That makes sense, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, further questions, uh, Council Member Volan. Yes, thank you. Um, I think this is for Mr. Grulick. Um, I'm curious uh, to, to clarify, uh, I'm looking at the map of the property and I see the R2 section and the EM section. Um, is the EM section part of the property or just an adjacent property? The, uh, uh, are you referring to the property just to the north of this? Yeah, 1407 West 11th in particular. Um, so that is not owned by the petitioner. That is a different use and different property. And but I mean, it looks like uh, it, that building is similar to buildings near it. That was probably built residential. Uh, is that uh, an industrial use now? Is there a business there or something? Yes, there's an industrial workshop that is there. I see. Um, so I mean, this kind of mixture of uses is not uncommon for this area. Correct. Yeah, the the Fountain Drive in this particular area has a, certainly a wide range of uses, uh, but for the most part, along Fountain Drive itself specifically, um, you know, like this other property just to the north is accessed off of 11th Street, um, but the the rest of the Fountain Drive to the west of this uh, is very industrial in nature. Very good. Thank you. Other questions from members of the committee. Um, I have one. Uh, so um, on the proposed UDO map, this property is uh, ME, which is um, mixed use employment. Uh, the request we have tonight is to change it to EM, which is uh, employment without mixed use. Um, Mr. Garlic, could you distinguish the, between the two and whether uh, there is any uh, conflict um, with what the staff had intended for this property based on the zoning map proposal and what is being requested now. Yep, so the, the EM district is the only district that allows for the building supply shop or building trade shop, which matches this exact use. Um, you know, like, like I mentioned the, uh, to council member Flaherty's question about this, I, I can't say that when we proposed to zone this to ME that we were uh, specifically cognizant that that use wasn't allowed there. Um, and, and it may have just been an error on our part that we proposed to rezone this to ME, uh, not realizing the building supply shop wasn't a permitted use in there. Uh, the employment use 
as it allows for this specific use or the, the employment district as it allows for this specific use uh, is a much better match. Uh, but they're very similar in terms of land uses. Um, you know, and, and I'll just say that we are still discussing the possibility of combining land uses between the ME and the EM districts uh, as a possible text amendment, just to kind of sync those two districts. Um, but they're, they're, they're very similar, but that difference is very distinguishable and noticeable and has an impact uh, because the building supply shop is not a permitted use in the ME district. And uh, the business supply shop, is that, I'm sorry if I missed this, is that part of the Comcast campus or that's just another property nearby? Uh, no, so the building supply shop is what this use would be classified as. So the building oh. trade or the building supply um, uh, is, is, is the match that this it works with. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm looking that up so school. Uh, that basically allows for the, the storage of work vehicles, um, you know, the, uh, yeah, that, that is the match that, that what they do. And that is the use that we had classified that as with the previous use variances um, under the old code building, building trade shop uh, is what the UDO classified this use as. We, we do not have the building trade shop anymore. Uh, that has been, uh, you know, I'll just say renamed or reclassified as school comma uh, trade or business. Uh, well, hold on a second. That's not right either. Sorry. Give me, give me just a second. Sure. Give a great answer on that one. Go so ahead. I'm flipping through pages here. Uh, contractor's yard. I apologize. Um, so contractor's yard is the, the use that this matches um, and is a permitted use in the EM district, but a conditional use in the ME district. So the contractor's yard, uh, you know, as I mentioned, matches what they do here, the storage of work vehicles, uh, storage of equipment. Um, that, is, that is the use that translates to what we used to have as the building supply shop or building trade. Okay, and that's the reasoning why they are asking for um, EM instead of ME. Correct. <laughs> Love the acronyms. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, no, thank you. Yes, <laughs> indeed. Are there any other questions for either Mr. Freilich or for the petitioner? Yes, Council Member Rosenbarger. Thank you. I have a follow up to my sidewalk question. Um, it is, I just, I just heard you say that we are paying for part of that multi use path because it was already a project. It just made me wonder. Um, I just feel like residential properties, you have to pay for your own sidewalks. So I'm just wondering, like, where's that money coming from on our end? And because um, I think that project is like partially federally funded, but I don't know if it's all the way funded. So where's that money coming from for us? And then is this rezone, like does that trigger compliance that would normally require the owner to properly develop the sidewalk? Um, so, the, so the rezoning request, um, well, so let me uh, try to answer the first part of the question in terms of funding for that. And I'll just say, I don't know that. Um, that's something that our transportation folks uh, in the office are dealing with. So I, I can't give you an answer on where the specific funding is coming for, um, for the corridor as a whole. Um, but the rezoning would require the property to come into compliance with any of our alternative transportation section requirements. Um, so because there is a multi-use path that is called out for along this property. That is what necessitates the removal of the sidewalk and the installation of that. Um, so the petitioners would be making a contribution um, equal to what it would have, what the city, what the cost is for that multi-use construction along this property frontage. Um, so they are they are reducing the burden for you know whatever the funding source is for the prop project as a whole 
by contributing to what it is for their portion along their frontage. That makes sense, thank you. Okay, any other questions? Yes, Council Member Flaherty. Mm -hmm. I think um, there, was a, there was a reference to um, uh, the planning department working with the petitioner to identify the exact preservation area um, prior to a second reading or second hearing. Uh, and I just wanted to ask if that's still on track and if those details will be settled by the time uh, the council votes on this legislation. Um, yep. Yeah, so that that was that was something that we were looking at between the first and second hearing at the planning commission to uh, see if the easements had been recorded. They had not been recorded, um, so that's why the condition of approval was on there that the easements uh, do need, have to be recorded now. And we will. That was just something that slipped through the cracks with the use variance approval in 2010. Is that? Done, done now? Is that right? Yeah, it, with, that with right? the rezoning, with the rezoning, we would make sure that that happens. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Any other questions before we go to the public? Seeing none, um, we'll open it up to public comment from uh, anybody who would like to speak on the rezone petition for 1600 West Fountain Drive. Um, if you uh, could raise your hand in the um, in the Zoom, so click on participants, and then next to your name, you should see an option to raise hand, or you can uh, type in the chat if you'd like to make a comment. Mr. Lucas, are you seeing any? I am not. No. Okay, let's give it a little bit longer. If anybody would like to make a comment on the rezone petition for 1600 West Fountain Drive. All right, I guess not. Um, all right, we'll come back to um, committee members. Um, are there, uh, should we, go ahead and, and make comments at this point, or are there, first, are there any final questions? Okay, so um, who would like to make some comments on this petition? And if you have um, any, uh, any issues with the, the request, please state those clearly so that we can attempt to resolve them before, next, uh, before the next discussion of this item. Council Member Flaherty. Thank you. Uh, thank you again to Mr. Gerlich and to the petitioner and, and the folks here representing the petitioner uh, for um, the presentations, for answering questions, and for bearing with us tonight as, as we went a bit late. Um, I am ready to move forward with this and great recommendation to the uh, council this evening, if my colleagues are, um, and I would support uh, the um, petition to rezone. I think um, it is well laid out and been well examined by, by staff in, in the materials we received in the packet. I think this is in line with what the comprehensive plan calls for as well as the anticipated changes um, in the UDO mapping exercise we're going through, even though those are not yet complete. Um, and I think there's some nice benefits uh, to this. Um, and as, we, as the uh, petitioner updates the property and we move towards a multi-use path along that corridor, for instance, um, as well as some conservation elements, um, so I think there's some nice benefits to the city in, in um, rezoning the property. And I appreciate that uh, that's the approach we're shifting to as well, instead of the, the use variance um, practice of the past. So um, this makes sense to me and I will be supporting it. Thank you. Thank you. Other committee member comments? No comments? Okay. Um, I will just comment to say that um, I uh, have no problems with this uh, request and I would be supportive of this rezone. Um, so uh, I'm sorry about my cat. Um, <laughs> would uh, anybody like to make a motion to uh, send this back to the full council with a positive recommendation? Recommend do pass. Second. 
All right, let's do our straw poll. Council Member Rosenbarger? Yes. Council Member Flaherty? Yes. Council Member Volan? Yes. And I also say yes. So we will forward this back to the, we'll forward it back. That doesn't really make sense, but we will um, Send return it. this to the uh, full council with a positive recommendation. And I thank everybody for um, bearing with us uh, in the length of our previous meeting and the lateness of the hour. Mr. Lucas, did you have any uh, anything that we need to do before we can close for the night? I don't night? believe so. Just, just uh, for any folks who are on the call for the uh, administration committee meeting, uh, that meeting uh, it sounded like would will not happen tonight uh, and uh, will uh, be noticed in a future uh, uh, packet that goes out. Yes, very good. All right. Uh, so for the land use committee, we are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>